I have a program for you today on the Chelsea ship spell. These clocks are no longer being produced by the Chelsea Clock Company, only in a limited number. Uh, the mechanical clocks, something in the neighborhood of three or four clocks that are being produced today. All the others are all quartz battery operated. As you know, Chelsea has been the timekeepers of the seas for over a hundred years. The way the ship spells work, and people are a little confused about the, the way they sound, the dial is broken up into twelve into three segments for the twelve hour period. It'd be at twelve o'clock, four o'clock, eight o'clock. At twelve thirty, you get one bell. At one o'clock, you get two bells. One thirty, you get three bells. Two o'clock, you get four bells. Two thirty, five bells. Three o'clock, six bells. Three six three thirty, seven bells, and four o'clock, eight bells. And then it's the sequence starts back over again at four thirty you get one bell. Now if you can refresh your memory, back in the old days in the movies, when you used to have the, the sailing ship movies, you always saw the sailor up in the crow's nest and he would holler down, eight bells and all is well, which meant that his ship was over and a new sailor would come on and he would start with the first bell. That's how the ship bells are sounded. Now what we're going to try to do today, we're going to disassemble this movement, clean it, reassemble it, and adjust it. Some of the adjustments in the Chelsea ship bells are a little tricky. They kind of confuse people, so maybe I can help clear some of that up a little bit. So we'll get started with this. I'll take this take some of the screws out and I'll take some movement out of the case. Movement, movement slides right out. And as you can see it's quite a quite a nice movement. There are three plates inside the movement. Your time train is in the front, your striking train is in the back. And that's your striking levers. I'm going to try to keep my hands out of the way as much as possible. The center, the mid of the hand is held on with a center screw. Undo the screw, and we can take the mid of the hand off. I'll take it off altogether. Put them in a small container. Take the screw out. Now, hold the dial movement on. There are three screws that hold the dial on. I'll take the screws off and we'll take the dial off. Okay, I removed the three screws. Take the dial off. The hour hand and the hour wheel will come with the dial. Like so. Set that aside. Next thing I want to do is I'll let down the mainspring power. I don't think there's too much power left on this. Been pretty well run out. The need of service badly. Inside the movement, there's a click. It's on the ratchet wheel. Undo the click. Let the mainspring down carefully until there's no power left. Do the same thing on the time side. The click is inside the plate. Open the click and let the spring down carefully. Now the next thing I want to take off will be the platform escapement so I don't, we don't hurt anything. I'll take the two screws out and we'll take the platform off. 
I got the screws loosened up. Take them out, put them in the in our tray. And the platform will lift off, come out through the top. I'll set this aside, we'll get back to it a little bit later. I'll take off the minute wheel. And I'll pry off the cannon pinion. It's just friction tight. Get underneath it, pry it up a little bit, and the cannon pin will come off. Now I'll take the I'll take the plates, the three screws out, and I'll get the mainspring out. Okay, I remove the three screws, put them in our bucket here, and I'll take off the mainspring plate. There's a set of clicks that's underneath the plate. Going to put this all in the basket, and we're going to clean it all up. Put the basket. Now, what you have to note here is that there's two different size barrels. The time side barrel is a little bit smaller than the strike barrel. So you have to remember that. If you can't remember, just put a little S mark on it, signifying strike, and a little T on it here, signifying the time. One goes in, barrel cover down. The other one is barrel cover up. So you can't really mix them up because they won't fit the other way. So I'll take the two barrels out. Now what I like to do here, the Chelsea book tells you to take the time train out next. Well, I found through my experience that if I take off a lot of the back portion, because a lot of this is attached to the front, so if I remove all of this, the front plate will come off a lot, a lot easier. So I'll, I'll take all these clips off and I'll get rid of a lot of this mechanism in the back. Okay, I removed all the, all the locking washers. Now I can take off some of the parts that are here. I'll take off the hammer first. Take, it, take the dog off. Got a screw holding it. I'll take the rack off. Rack has got a little spring on the bottom, so be careful of that. I take I take the D10 off. The rocker arm and a rocker lifting arm. And I'll also take the kinks the back cannon pinion off. So all I have left is the gathering pallet. That prize off, I'll loosen that up and we'll take that off. Okay, I've loosened, I've loosened the gathering pallet. Now we'll put these all in the, all in the basket, because I'm gonna, it's all has to be cleaned. That one, we get the job finished, it's all nice and sparkly clean. Just try to remember what the names of the parts are and where they go. There used to be a publication that Chelsea used to put out on the nomenclature of the clock, but I, I called them, I called them a couple weeks ago, and the young lady tells me that it's no longer available. Put these aside, I'll show you the publication, what it looks like. Publication looks something like this here. In fact, this is this is the one that Chelsea used to put out quite a few years ago. It was only a dollar, but she tells me it's no longer available because they haven't been printing it. 
This is the Model 4L movement. That's the one we're working on today. And it's the parts illustrated list. And what it consists of is all the nomenclature and the breakdown of the whole clock. This is the platform escapement, the back plate with all the levers, the back plate all assembled, telling you where the wheels and the, and the levers all belong. The time train, the strike train, the front plate with the regulator, the barrel assemblies, there's two different barrels. You can see in the picture one is up and one is down, and your, and your plates. Now what I, what I might do with this here, I, I just might make some copies up. And if people are interested in the Chelsea clock, I'd be, I'd be glad to give it to them just for what it cost me to have them printed up and mailed out. But that was put out by the Chelsea clock company quite a few years ago, which is not available anymore today. Now we'll get back to our movement. Now there are three, three screws here holding the time plate on. I'll take the screws off and we can remove the front plate. Okay, I've taken the screws out. I'll take a lift the plate off carefully. Here we don't hurt anything. That's your, your silencer for when you want to shut the clock off. Put that in the basket. I can take out my center wheel and my second wheel. We'll clean them all up. My third wheel and my fourth wheel. I can see there's a lot of, a lot of dirt and old gummy oil in there. Okay, now we have left we have the inner plate for this striking train. I'll take those screws off. Okay, I remove the screws. I'll take the warning lever out. Take the plate off. A little bit of dirt in there. And I'll take the striking train out. Take out the fly. Warning wheel with the pin in it. This is the count wheel. With all the pins in it. First wheel. And this is our, our wheel that carries the gathering pallet on the other side. So now we have everything all stripped down. We can clean it up, put it in the cleaning machine, put all the parts in the basket. Put the screws in the, in the bucket. And we have the barrels left. Now, you have to take the barrels, the mainsprings out of the barrels, <clears throat> so that they do get gummy inside. And years ago, Chelsea used to use a graphite, which was in them. And this probably still has the graphite, the original graphite in it. I'll take and pop the cover off. And we'll take, this, we'll take the pallet out, the arbor out. See, there's, there's the graph right there, how black it is. Chelsea used that for many, many years. Now we, I don't use the graphite anymore. I use Mobile One motor oil. 
Now the way you get the spring out of here is just grab a hold of it with a pair of pliers. Just pull out a couple of curls and then slowly let it down. Don't let it fly away on you. And it's hooked onto the barrel. Just unhook it and take the spring out. Now what I do with this, I take, I clean these. I take a, a cloth. I'll take a cloth with some benzene on it. And I'll just take and I'll lace that on through like that and get rid of all that old oil and stuff that's on here. And then when I lubricated it, I'll do the same thing. I'll put some mobile one oil onto the, the cloth and then I'll, I'll lace it in between with some mobile one oil and that'll be enough oil on that spring to keep her lubricated. I'll do the other one and we can put this all in the cleaning machine and then I'll get to the platform for you. Okay, I've loosened up the stud screw. I'll take the Brit screw out. This happens to be a Breguet hairspring, so lift it off nice and careful. Take the balance with it. And with your, with your tweezer, you can take and just push that stud out of the stud hole. Just push this stud through and the balance will be separated from the balance bridge. And you have four screws here holding your, your pallet in and your escape wheel in. I'll take those off and take them out. Okay, I've taken the four screws out. I'll take the bridge off. and I'll take the escape wheel bridge off. This is my pallet. Be very careful that these parts are very small, very delicate, can be broken very easily. And the escape wheel. So we'll put these in my watch cleaning basket and we'll clean them up in the watch cleaning machine. Get them all cleaned up, we'll come back and we'll start putting it back together for you. In 1976, Chelsea put out a limited edition of the Bicentennial clock. They only made a thousand of these clocks, and they were all numbered from one to a thousand. On the back of the clock was the number that Chelsea issued to each clock that they put out. This one happens to be number 297, Bicentennial Series. Quite a nice piece. Now we'll get to part two. We'll start putting this clock back together for you. Okay, we have our movement all cleaned. Starting to assemble it. One of the important things you want to watch here is that make sure your stop lever is up against your stop pin and your warning wheel is, is up at the top. Now I can put this plate on, put the middle plate on, and then I can put the other the time train in. Okay, we have the middle plate on. What I like to do here, I put the time train in. This inner plate is a little difficult to get to the oil. So I like to oil it now when I, while it's still open and I can see the fuel holes. And like I've told you in past programs, don't over oil these clocks because there's too much oil will create too much dirt 
and you'll have all kinds of problems. A little bit of oil, do half the oil sink and all of them. Now I can put on the upper plate and then I can put the pivots in the holes and we can start adjusting this clock. Okay, we have the time plate on. Now we can oil these pieces that are here. Put in our barrels. Remember the larger barrel. It's, it's two size barrels. The larger barrel goes in the and the strike size. Barrels in. Now when you put your barrel cover on, make sure your clicks are in the right position. Set the clicks in, put a couple of screws in there. Okay, I'll put a little power to it and I'll check and see that my warning went into warning, pre trip, a little bit more. And she went into my first one count. So now when I put my levers on, That'll continue to, to strike, and we'll get to that in a second. Okay, now we're ready to put on our striking parts. First one I'll put on be the rocker, and the rocker activated, the lifter. Next, I'll put on the dog. Hands out of your way again. Tighten the screws up. Put on the detent. Put on the rack. Rack has got a little spring on the bottom because engages in there. Put the hammer on. I'll put all the lock pins on before we put the rest on. And when your clock is at rest position and you install your gathering pallet, the gathering pallet pin should be at the 12 o'clock position so that you've got enough pickup on your rack. Okay? Now I'll put on the cam unit. Now on this cam unit, there's a, there's a pin on the bottom. That acts as your subtractor for your rocker arm. That has to be in the correct position when you put it on. When your clock has struck the hour, put the pin down at six o'clock position. Six o'clock position, when it comes up to the next quarter hour, it'll pick up the rocker arm assembly, put the rocker into motion, and then your subtractor will work. This is your subtractor. It comes up there, as your hammer is up, this, this will come up, it'll lock into position, and then subtract your, your last hour. Okay, after you put on your, your, your snail unit underneath, and you put it in the correct position at 6 o'clock at the hour, you put on your cam wheel, and your intermediate wheel. Now, if you notice on these two wheels, there are some dimple marks. 
Make sure you line up these two dimple marks exactly in the same line so that when your your cam comes around it's in the right position because that lines up with the pin underneath. And the way it works, I can show you here if I get my hands out of your way. Bring your bring your hand around. That's your one bell. Did you see the subtractor come up to the rocker arm and subtract the bell over here? Now it'll come up to the hour. The rocker will fall down and allow us to strike the even numbers. That's two. Come to 130. It strikes three. It subtracted number four. Come back up to the hour. Struck the even numbers. Now we'll strike the odd number. Okay? You have to make sure that you have these two pieces lined up with the snail pin underneath at the bottom. And it picks up this racker, rocker and subtracts your odd number. Now I'll put on the Okay, I cleaned and reassembled my platform. Now I can put that back on. Put the rest of my pieces on. I'll put two screws in there. Okay, I got the platform all assembled. Put the adjusting regulator back on again. And one thing you have to be careful here is when you put the hands on, Make sure you put the hand on at 12 o'clock when it strikes. Otherwise your hand is going to be off. So make sure it's at the 12 o'clock position. And then send, then you can. Okay, I put the movement in the case. I put the four screws in the back. I'll put on the inner bezel. It just snaps into position like so. Set it to the time. Seven, seven o'clock will be six bells. Seven thirty will be seven bells. And eight o'clock will be eight bells. That's the end of the watch. Now the new sailor comes on, he gets his first bell at 8.30. And so on. Nine o'clock, I'll be two bells. Now all these movements that Chelsea made for their ship's bells were all gold-plated. The plates inside were gold-plated. And the, and the barrel and some of the wheels.